Finally, a really interesting article in The Atlantic, uh, in Atlantic Today, um, Atlantic Magazine. It's called um, The Elite College Students Who Can't Read Books. And it, it, it's, it tells the kind of, it tells the story of a, um, a professor who teaches uh, uh, literature humanities at Columbia University, which is like a, a great books prerequisite. It's a required class. It's been around for a long time. And one of the things he has noticed, and other professors at universities have noticed, is the extent to which students have been struggling with reading books. And you know, there's a whole argument, it's their cell phones, it's electronics, it's this and that, and so on. But uh, this professor dug a little deeper into this and started asking the students what the deal is, what, why were they were struggling, why was it so hard, what was the issue that they were facing? And basically the students told the professors that the reality is that they've never read a book. That in public high, in high schools, particularly public high schools, they're not required to read a book, not even a thin one. They're assigned excerpts from books. They're assigned poetry. They're assigned news articles, even in literature. But not a single book. And it turns out that this is a common phenomenon. That in English class, in high schools, students are not required to read a book. And this is true, um, it, it seems, on a national scale. Now, I was, and, and this, I read this, and it was interesting, because I was in Israel, when I was in Israel, I spoke in front of a group of um, gifted students. These are students with very high intelligence who take these afternoon programs, after school programs, targeted at gifted students. And I gave, came and gave a talk about capitalism, basically. And in the q and A, I I can't remember what the question was, but we got into this discussion. Somebody asked me where I get my information from, and I said, I read books. And one of the things that really surprised me, I guess, because these are gifted students, so I had an, a certain assumption about them, that they pushed back on the need to read books. It was like, you really? You read books, whole books? Why do you read books? And really it came out that if they're interested in a topic, they'll Google it, they'll read a Wikipedia article. These days they might ask AI, ChatGPT, and that's it. That's enough. And I had to give a whole articulated, I don't know, 10 minute response on the value of reading a book on a topic, on the value of going in depth and, and often on a topic, not just reading one, because that is a particular perspective of an author and there might be another and you have to fill it in and you have to, and I'm not talking about novels here, I'm talking about nonfiction. And it, it was astounding to me because I assumed gifted students read. I, it's just, and it turns out, no, today they don't. And they're not taught to read in a sense of reading a book and the value of reading a book by the English literature professors at school. This is a disaster. I mean, even if it's a simple book, at whatever level you can get kids to read a book, have that experience. It, it, it is truly scary. I mean, um, this professor at Columbia says, you know, 20 years ago, his classes had no problem reading Pride and Prejudice or in, in a week or even Crimes and Punishment. Crime and Punishment is not an easy book to read, Dostoevsky. And 20 years ago, they could read it. And uh, that's in a week. And now they, they can't handle it. A whole book? 
I, I can't read. I can't, they can't focus. They can't concentrate. They, they have no skill set. And they, they have no comprehension. And, you know, the, the author of this article, which I recommend reading in The Atlantic today, um, says they've spoken to numerous professors at universities, and this is not an unusual phenomenon. This is indeed common. Students cannot read books. And a big part of that is they've never been expected to read a book. And I'm not talking about the responsibility of parents here. The responsibility of teachers. Teachers, if you teach a high school class, teach an, a, a, a primary school class, find a book appropriate for primary school kids to read. They should be reading books. And they should view books as resources. Anyway, it's a depressing story. But that is the state of the culture. And uh, what, I, what I find interesting here is how they go straight to the high schools and they, and, they, and, they, and they figure out what the kids are learning in their undergrads is, in their high school or in their primary schools, is, is, is destroying it. You know, they, they, so I'm sure distractions have a lot to do with this cell phones and everything, but we had television. And I, I read constantly. I'm, I was a little bit weird in that respect because my mom used to complain. She used to say, stop reading, go outside and play with other kids. She used to complain that I didn't socialize enough, that I read too much. Usually mothers complain about the opposite. My mother had a complaint about that. And when I was interested in the topic when I was a kid, we had an encyclopedia, and I would open up an encyclopedia and read it, but I would sometimes just open up the encyclopedia at random at an entry and read it. And I was already reading nonfiction books in my late teens, full-on nonfiction books. Friend Harper can't read? You got to read, Friend Harper. There's nothing like reading. And, and listening, I do a lot of listening. It's not the same. It's not the same. Because you don't control the pace. When you read, you control the pace. RDF says, I loved to read when I was a kid. And what happened? You should all be reading now. Instead of only listening to podcasts. Reading, reading, reading. Ultimate key to the world. As capitalist spy says...